Hello and welcome to the U.S. Green Chamber of Commerce National Webinar Series. This is your host and Chairman of the Board, Jim Bunch, and I'm super excited about the interview that we have today. Our guest is going to be a gentleman by the name of Larry Smith, and Larry is the president of a company called Go Green Electrolyzer. And before I dive too deep into that, I just want you to, to share that Larry and I had a chance to connect prior to this webinar. And the technology that he's going to introduce today is so simple yet so profound that I think it will get most of us to really look at how we're doing business and how simple it can be to succeed. But before we do that, I want to share with you a little bit about our mission and our vision here at the U.S. Green Chamber of Commerce. You know, our mission is to protect and promote America's emerging economy. And when you think about that, that's all business. <laughs> if we look at businesses, they've got to be sustainable and we want to make sure that there is a place and a support for these businesses that are going to lead the future. Our vision is that these businesses are actually the solution to a fulfilled life, a healthy planet, and a thriving economy. And we take that vision very seriously and we're super excited because right now our target is 100,000 businesses in the United States that are working towards the triple bottom line. For people, planet, and the profit. And the way that we're going to do this is really provide three things. Number one, education. We want to bring to you the best information, the best education, the best thought leaders to help you grow your business, to help you stay on track and on target. We also want to build a network across the country and eventually across the world of business owners like you, business owners who have like mind, who want a more sustainable future, they want to create better environments for their employees. They want to make sure that they're leading the world in this new economy. And number three, we want to make sure that we have the proper advocacy in place so that your voice is heard and protected. So when you think about it, there needs to be a shift right now uh, in the government for us to make sure that you, in fact, are protected as a business owner who's doing things that are good for the environment. So we want to shift the balance of power there. And one of the ways that we do that is we've teamed up with national media partners and sponsors like How Creative, Organic SEO, Guy Consultants, uh, The Ultimate Game of Life, Infusionsoft, Pathosans, and Larkin Volpat, just to name a few. And these partners have donated their time and their resources to make sure that we can get these messages out to you. So without any further ado, I'd like to, again, introduce you to Larry Smith. Larry is the president of Go Green Electrolyzer, which is a management and consulting firm. And he's one of the nation's leading experts on electrolyzed water, right? And he's going to share with you how he helps companies completely revolutionize the way that they clean and sanitize. Larry's out of Daytona Beach, uh, Florida, which is where I'm originally from. But before I, before I introduce Larry here real quick, I want to share with you something that, that got me really interested in this subject, and that is I live here in San Diego, California, up on a cliff that overlooks the ocean. So all day I'm staring at the ocean, and one day I was watching my wife clean the countertops, and fortunately we use sustainable cleaners, but she was cleaning the countertops, and she was rinsing the sponge in the sink afterwards. And I started thinking to myself, how many of the homes, of the thousands of homes that are along this cliff line here, how many of them are using toxic solutions? And if they're using toxic solutions, where's that going? It's going right into our streams. It's going right into our oceans. It's going right into our drinking water supply. And I read a report a while back about the number of medicines and chemicals that are in our water supplies that you and I are taking into our bodies. So when I heard that this interview was going to be with Larry, I got super excited and really interested because he's really approached it from an industrial side to help these corporations do things that are better for their clients who are coming through, say, the hotels or their businesses, but definitely for the staff who are potentially breathing in toxic chemicals all day, and it's unnecessary. So without any further ado, let me turn it over to Larry. Larry, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, Jim. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Absolutely. It's, well, it's my me, pleasure. Uh, let me kind of... Go ahead. Well, let me take over at this stage of the game, if you don't mind, and, and um, talk to you a little bit about what we're going to discuss today. But first, touching on um, some of the important areas. We want to protect the employees of companies. We want to protect their guests and, and guests. And most importantly, we want to protect their bottom line because that's all of us to become more of a sustainable environment. 
um, economy, and, and those are the ways that we're going to get at it. So we look at economic sustainability. I think most people know what that is. I'm not going to spend time on these three things, social sustainability and obviously environmental sustainability. And, and I, I know, Jim, that you've started a, uh, a company working with bamboo. And, uh, boy, I've seen some wonderful things out there that, that, that people are doing with bamboo. So my, my compliments on that. Well, thank you, Larry. Let's go to the next slide, and this is what we're going to – okay. Well, this is what we're going to learn today. We're going to talk about the fact that we are a chemically dominated society. And I'm a perfect example of that. When I was in college, my first year in college, I was washing floors nights in the supermarket. And, and back in those days, we used to take the product off the shelf. So I would take Top Job, and then I would take Mr., uh, Mr. Clean, and then I would take Less Toil, and I would mix them all together because I figured if one was good, all three would be great. And, and it kind of takes me back to, um, you know, at one time, 95 out of 100 doctors uh, suggested that Lucky Strike was the best cigarette to smoke. That's, that's marketing. Those are things that are happening to us. And uh, so that's one of the things we're going to touch on today. We're going to talk about the unseen cost of toxic chemicals to those three factors that we just discussed, the environment, people, and business. We're going to talk about the, the impact on carbon footprint. It's monstrous. It is so, so positive as to what we can do working with our clients on carbon footprint. We're going to talk about eliminating toxic chemicals from the workplace. And, and not just eliminating them. It's easy to say, well, let's eliminate them. But more importantly, we have to have a solution for eliminating them, and we'll get to that. And then the financial awards, uh, just great financial rewards. I don't think I've been involved with a system being installed uh, that has not paid for itself in, in, in less than one year. And then obviously there's other benefits to go along with what we're discussing. So we're going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, children, what's happening right now in the United States and throughout the world as far as children, their brains, their health. And, and chemicals. And this is actually a, an article. Sometimes if you get a chance, just Google what are we doing to our children's brains. And you'll find it very, very dismaying. And, and it talks about chemicals. And health concerns. The CDC states there's a direct link between toxic chemicals and childhood diseases, including autism. And you can expand that to autism, allergies, uh, you, you name it, ADHD, all these different things, there are links between all the chemicals that are out there. And if you look at autism, in, in two years, up 300%. Uh, asthma in children, 58%. In children, 6 to 11. It, it, it just goes on. Statistical cancer has increased 20%. Um, uh, I'm sorry, 100, uh, 200% in, in 20 years. Un unbelievable numbers. I even have a hard time getting them out. And the likelihood of U.S. women developing breast cancer, 1960, 1 in 20, and now 1 in 8. Now, we can look at all these things and say they're all, you know, all related to the environment. And, and obviously, some of it has to do with the fact that there's better reporting. But the Center for Disease Control will tell you that a lot of this is due to environmental causes. And when we go to the next page, you'll see why. 80,000 new chemicals since World War II. That's 80,000 that we're aware of, and less than 20% have been tested for toxicity. 80,000. Now, 80,000 to some people might not sound like too much, but then you take uh, the person working in a hotel room or in a uh, manufacturing facility or in a healthcare facility, and they're spraying one chemical, then they're spraying another chemical. Well, now you're talking billions of new chemicals are being created every single day. And unfortunately, it's the people on the lower end of the scale, it's the health workers, it's the Jan Sand people, it's the facilities people that are inhaling this and breathing this and touching this all day long. So the mixing of chemicals is, is, is a real problem. In hospitals, 90,000 people die every single year in hospitals. And that's from hospital-acquired infections. So Jim, if you go into a hospital, I think you have a 7 or 8% chance of getting a hospital of quiet infection. And that's because we're not only not cleaning properly, but we're not using the right solutions. So just, just bear that in mind. Don't go into hospitals. Some, some nurses have told me, if you get sick, <laughs> the last place you want to be is a hospital. Um, and then the global threat that the CDC again talks about, these superbugs that are being created. So my solution, electrolyzed water. What is it? It is salt, water, and electricity coming together in a cell. So if you look at this, this piece in blue here, this is a cell. And in the center part of it, salt water, saline solution, 
goes through. And separating those two outside chambers is a membrane and is an electrode, one positive on one side and one negative on the other side. And what we're doing, Jim, we take that NaCl for salt, sodium, and we, we rip it apart. And so the Na ions go one way and create sodium hydroxide, and the Cl ions go the other way, creating chloride. So, so we're taking nature, we're using what's found out there in nature, and we're using that to create two solutions. One solution, hypochlorous. The second solution, sodium hydroxide. Hypochlorous is a extremely efficient killer of bacteria. In fact, it's in your body. It's in your body killing bacteria right now. And, and when you think about that, nature's not going to find a way around that. And when you think about sodium hydroxide, there's not a cleaning solution out there that does not have sodium hydroxide in it. Well, what we've done is we've stripped out all those other things that people put into cleaners. We've stripped out the color. We've stripped out the fragrances. We've stri stripped out all these different chemicals that are added. And it's just straight sodium hydroxide. And all that comes from salt, water, and electricity coming together, going through a cell, and going into two separate tanks where you can use it for cleaning and sanitizing. This is probably one of the most important slides that we have, Jim. Pathogen kill times. We kill most bacteria in 5 to 8 to 10 seconds. Staph, E. coli, area, Salmonella, and MRSA. Now, C. diff is 30 seconds, and uh, HIV is 60 seconds, because those are pretty nasty bugs. But we do that through an electrolyzed water system. And the saddest thing is, if you look at what you have under your kitchen cabinet, or on the shelf in a supermarket, or what you're presently using in manufacturing facilities, or cleaning facilities, it says spray on the surface and keep wet for 10 minutes. <laughs> I've, I've never seen anybody spray and, and keep something wet for 10 minutes and then go back and wipe it. It's always spray and wipe and spray and wipe. And this is where we are getting these monstrous superbugs because the weak bacteria are being killed off and the strong are surviving. And those strong bacteria are then being moved from one location that the person just cleaned slash uh, disinfected supposedly and, it, and they're taking that bacteria and moving to another location. And that's a major, major problem in hotels. Again, so Larry, very few let, people know. Let me ask you a question because this is, and, and I apologize for, for pausing you right there for a moment, but I mean, you know, the, the chemical toxicity part makes amazing sense to me. And then when you get to this slide and you talk about the pathogen kill times and how environment, environmentally friendly your product is, you know, I'm thinking in my head, wow, are the listeners going to be as blown away as I am? about this right here because my mind in the back of my own head says well why is it all these other companies have made billions of dollars with you know these toxic chemicals that they're using to kill these pathogens and you've got what seems to be a very simple safe and effective solution uh, you know so I guess my my meter in the back of my head is going okay if I'm listening to this for the first time how could this be true? How could you have something that's so powerful yet, you know, everybody in the world isn't required to use this? I guess that's kind of where my head's coming from. <laughs> well, we, we are a chemically dominated society. Uh, if you go back to the end of the Second World War, the United States came out of that war very, very strong. And during that Second World War, we created a lot of chemicals. And then there were very monstrous chemical companies that were already in business, started expanding it. Supermarkets became a big thing. Uh, customers were looking for more and more things. And we thought chemicals were the answer to everything. It's just the environment we grew up in. Again, I think about my washing floors nights, mixing those three chemicals, thinking it was the right. So that's kind of the environment that we grew up in. If you look into Japan and China and Europe and in, in, in Russia coming out of the Second World War, they were devastated. So they found better solutions as far as dealing with um, uh, bacteria and cleaning and disinfecting. So they came up, they're the ones that came up with electrolyzed water. Uh, Japan uses it in hospitals. They use it in, in wound care and open heart surgery. They use it in a lot of different areas, and they do not have the amount of people that die in hospital-acquired infections that we do here in the United States. I believe they have a third of what we have right now in the United States. So, so if you look and if you walk down the aisle at, at your friendly supermarket, and you're walking into the where the cleaning and solutions are, 
you can smell them. And I actually get constricted when I, when I walk into that aisle. But that's all marketing. And, and we are so good at that. I work for an a electrolyzed water company up in Boston. In 2009, we were bought by one of the largest chemical companies that sells into hospitals and into the hospitality industry. The next day, the company was closed down. Now, they paid a pretty penny for that company, but it was, it was better for their business model because they want to sell you chemicals every single day. And, um, boy, it's, it's sad, isn't it? It's really sad. So does that, does that answer your question? It does. And it's, it's I, you know, I want to represent the, the listener who might be a little skeptical at this at first, but hopefully they'll start to say, well, wait a minute, maybe this is worth us taking a deeper look at because, as you mentioned, this, this type of solution would actually shift the way that consumers have been behaving, the way that businesses have been behaving, and just like we've seen in certain industries, um, if there's not a financial benefit for some of these companies to move to a healthier solution, it's possible that they might actually stall the progress uh, that we're talking about here. And that is part of the reason the Green Chamber is such a big uh, advocate for making sure that sustainable businesses have a fighting chance because I, I would say it's fair to say that the um, the laws are stacked against and the finances are stacked against some of the companies that we think actually ought to be uh, getting a little more attention. So thank you so much for, for clearing that up and let's let's keep going on this because this is a fascinating topic for me. Right. We'll touch on that financial reward, but you know, you, you bring up a great point. Your CEO, Michelle Thatcher, made the comment that electrolyzed water is a game changer. Now think about sustainable and, and um, energy consumption and water usage and paint and, and all those kinds of things. Um, they all make great impact, but nothing will make as great an impact as electrolyzed water. Because when you think about the carbon footprint, we are taking away chemical manufacturing plants. We're taking away cottons for shipping, boxes, pallets, uh, shipping costs, transportation costs, warehousing costs, double, triple handling. All that goes away. And you generate this solution on site. So you reuse your bottles. You don't have to worry about corrugated or double handling or anything. You use it, you spray it, and you fill it back up again when you need it. And, and you produce the quantities that you need. So, so it minimizes the waste, and again, all those other things. It, it, is, it is so wonderful. Um, but, it, but it has been a, a, a tough sell. I, I agree with you. It is, you know, I sometimes hear, Jim, that this is too good to be true. And um, in, in some respects it is. But we have test data upon test data from throughout the world and from uh, governments and also from very, very large universities just saying that electrolyzed water and hypochlorous are absolutely wonderful. So, well, moving on, uh, these are some of the industries that, that electrolyzed water can be used in, and I'm not really sure what industry would not be used in. I mean, if, if you look at schools, we have green school alliances and green school uh, organizations. Um, if, you, if you look at uh, gyms, you know, there's, I think there's 30,000 gyms across the United States. If you look at in, in um, uh, athletic fields, uh, these these uh, new artificial fields that have the grass and then the little rubber pellets in them. Well, some people have done testing on those fields and they call them um, nutritious dishes because they're just loaded with bacteria, loaded with bacteria. And, and so we can actually treat those fields. And then when it comes to the mats, you know, within the, the organization for wrestling or gym or whatever it may be. But in the agricultural industry, people are using it for spraying on food, killing bacteria during processing. Both Coca-Cola and Pepsi use uh, electrolyzed water in, in some of their facilities. And it, it helps to, you know, keep the bottles um, purified before they put the solution in them and also to clean and sanitize the outside of the other, other bottles. So I, I can't think of an industry where it, where it cannot be used. Well, this is interesting before you go to that next so, step, because I remember not too long ago that my wife had come home from one of the health clubs, and it's a pretty nice health club, and she said that a number of the people in the gym had gotten a rash, and they were pretty sure that it was from the yoga mats in the workout gym. And, it, you know, I thought, wow, this is pretty incredible that this gym either isn't properly cleaning it or whatever, but it makes sense. Anywhere that people are sweating, the bacteria is going to come in 
And we're being exposed to that every day in places that we probably wouldn't have thought about. Well, that's correct. But, you know, it could also be from the chemicals. Um, I know I go to a gym and I use a spray bottle when I, when I finish, and I should probably be using a spray bottle of the disinfectant before I start uh, on a treadmill or something. But there's nothing on the bottle saying what's in it. So it, it could be a reaction to the chemicals that are being sprayed on, on, on those uh, mats, or as you said, it could be from the, from the um, other people who use those mats. So, yeah, it's, it's a lose-lose no matter, no matter what it is. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of potential within uh, colleges and universities and even high schools as far as the athletic end of the business, but also those 30,000 gyms that are out there in the United States. Well, touching on, um, there's always good and bad. Well, this is the good as far as electrolyzed water, and I don't know the bad for electrolyzed water. You generate on site, okay? So you put a system in, it has tanks, the solution goes into the system. Once you plug it in and connect it to a, a water supply, it's all automatic. You don't have to think about it at all anymore, except every now and then you're gonna have to add some salt. It's non-toxic and non-corrosive. I actually drink the solution. I'm going to be presenting at the um, Global Food and Beverage Expo next month in um, Orlando. I'm actually a keynote speaker. And one of the things I will do is, is I will drink the solution, both solutions, and I will spray the solutions into my eyes. I would not do that with anything else. So that's, when I say 100% not toxic, that's, I can prove it. Um, Return on investment, you talk about the, the, the financial benefit, and this is one of the things that Michelle has taught me, your, your CEO. Um, Larry, you need to mention and make sure people know that financially it's great for the business. It's great for their bottom line because it will save them money. And as I touched on, I have never installed a system that has not paid for itself in less than a year. That's, I don't know what you can buy right now with, with less than a 12-month payback but an electrolyzed water system does that. And then, you're, and then your operating costs on top of that is pennies, two, three cents a gallon, uh, depending on you know, the amount of volume that, that you produce from your system. So the system started about $7,000, and that's a very basic system where uh, you know, minimal output, but certainly enough for a restaurant and some small hotels, and they go up to about $16,000. Now, some companies also have systems that go up to $50,000, and those are for ho uh, larger healthcare facilities, hospitals, where you're talking a lot of volume, you need a lot more controls, um, and, and you, know, you, you can spend as much money as you want, but, but that would make sense for a company that size. And, and the benefits is it's, it, it is Green Seal certified. Uh, electrolyzed water is approved by a Green Seal. And, and one company I can think of, and, and another company I can think of as far as, uh, well, they're all approved by the EPA and FDA. I, I should have touched on that earlier. Um, but one company has gone so far to have their, their solutions um, uh, even approved by, uh, by the EPA and FDA. So, so there's a lot of tremendous, tremendous benefits for you as a business owner. And um, I'm still, as I'm talking, I'm trying to think of any, any negatives. I haven't found it yet. So, so additional benefits. 95% of the toxic chemicals will be eliminated. Now, in a hotel, I think the only chemical that you might have left might be something if you have a pool, uh, chlorine in your pool, though you could use electrolyzed water, and uh, maybe something to work in that oven, to, you know, to clean off that heavy uh, buildup that you might have in the oven. You will have a reduction of liabilities. I have a slideshow showing that something like number five and number six of hazardous jobs, believe it or not, is people in the Jan Sand business, cleaning and sanitizing. Uh, from, now, some of that's falls, but it's also from chemical usage. So think of you can actually, one, one hotel in Boston has actually decreased their working comp cost because of what they've been able to do as far as eliminating problems from the hazardous chemicals. Um, so if you eliminate workman's comp costs, you eliminate other you know, associated costs, it's not like those people with the rash, Theoretically, they probably should not have gone to work the next day because it could have been contagious, but employee absences go down. So that means that you're not paying somebody else to work overtime to cover you. And then, the, you know, obviously the benefits of safety, facilities, environment um, is, 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 is a great, great benefit. Think if you have, have a hotel room, and, and, and Jim, you can tell your customers, your clients, that this hotel room has been sanitized and disinfected. Uh, that's 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 a, that's an unbelievable thing. 
Now let's just touch on that carbon footprint again, because I think that is so key, especially for sustainability people that are working towards that effort throughout the United States and throughout the world. And uh, some wonderful things happening there. And I, as, as Michelle Thatcher, your CEO says, you know, this could have a dramatic input on that carbon. So we, we could decrease the um, chemical manufacturing plants, as I mentioned, all those kinds of things go away. You don't have to worry about mixing the chemicals on site. Uh, you don't have to mix them with water or anything of that sort. The, the products into tanks, and then you just fill your bottles or your mop bucket or your floor washing machine with it. There's no waste products. Um, again, touching on that whole distribution cycle from manufacturing right through all those logistics, that, it goes away. So you, you just improve that whole sector nicely. And think about how few chemicals are now going to go into stream how few chemicals are going to go into the atmosphere, how few chemicals people are going to breathe in, into their lungs or get on their skin. So again, it's, it's, it's just amazing what happens as far as the carbon footprint. And um, we're actually having a study, we're, we're commissioning a study to come back with the actual number, and I think it's going to be based on per thousand square feet. So if somebody has a you know, 600,000 square foot facility, we'll be able to tell them uh, what their savings is going to be uh, via the carbon footprint. And, that, and that'll be a real great number to have. And I'm, I'll be sharing that with you, Jim, in the future. I look forward to that. Before you, so before you go into message. this next phase, Larry, let me yep. uh, just comment on something because this was a thought that I had probably four years ago and you're reminding me of this. I live in a beautiful town called Cardiff by the Sea and we literally live right by the ocean. So we live kind of up on a hill. It's one of those um, Southern California cities that still has its beachy kind of feel to it. And we look down over quite a few houses, you know, because everything's on a hill that overlooks the ocean. And one day I was watching my wife and she loves to clean our countertops. We've got granite countertops, you know, 180 degree view of the ocean. And I'm sitting there looking out at the ocean and all of a sudden she sprayed whatever it was. And I could immediately tell that my senses started to kind of get irritated, right? And I said, what is it you're spraying? And she showed me the bottle. And what immediately hit me as I was looking at all of the houses on the hill is every one of us is probably spraying some type of chemical on our counters, putting something in our dishwashers, putting something in our toilets when the housekeepers come. And, you know, I just started thinking about the amount of chemicals that were going to flow into our water system and then what's also flowing right down into our oceans. And I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if every one of these houses had a way to keep, you know, clean and, and that without impacting the environment. And of course, that was years ago. And now you're sharing this. And I thought, OK, we're, we're talking about the business side. Uh, is there any conversation around smaller home units or a local place that, you know, people could go down to and and, you know, fill up their bottles for a fee or something like that? Because uh, I, I keep thinking about that, the number of chemicals that are flowing right into our water supply uh, and, and what that would mean to us. And doing And the good thing about the sanitizer, it has what's, what's called an ORP, oxidation reduction potential. And that just measures how effective something is as far as cleaning. And it has a good ORP as far as cleaning. And, and you know, when you talk about sanitizing and disinfecting, it really is a two-step process. You need to clean first to remove the dirt. And then you kill the bacteria, what's the remaining bacteria. And that's through the, the hypochlorous. Um, so if I look at um, in the home, homes get clean on a pretty regular basis, especially countertops. So they're going to be manufacturing systems that I understand will be under $200 for the home. It'll be electrolyzed water, just the sanitizer, which, which to me is fine because I recommend to people in the hospitality industry, look, when you, the solution that you need in the bathroom is just hypochlorous. You don't need the sodium hydroxide because those bathrooms get cleaned every single day. So there's not a lot of buildup. And if there is some buildup in the tub, okay, then spray some sodium hydroxide in it. But yes, I think you will see something on the shelf in, in six months. And I'm kind of excited about it because I've had a number of people that have expressed an interest in it. But you know, when, when you talk about that, 
you know, the, the, the atmosphere in your home is seven times more polluted <laughs> than, than outside your home. So, so when your wife does that cleaning, you know, keep your, uh, keep your doors open. Uh, we, we have an electrolyzed water system in our house, and, and the only thing, including our clothes washing, we use is the sodium hydroxide and, and the hypochlorous. So we've, we've been able to take advantage of that, and uh, it's, it's, it's been a treat. And we don't, we don't have any other chemicals. We don't have any other chemicals in our house. So that's kind of nice. So I'll, I'll make sure that I let you know about that. In fact, I'll probably even post something on LinkedIn so people will become aware of it, and uh, maybe you guys can put something out and letting people know that there, there is a tremendous option out there for their home for the cleaning and Sounds sanitizing. Good. Great. Well, I just wanted to show you a couple of slides on what our systems look like. This is a system that's installed in a hospital. Uh, this one will produce, I believe it's about 60, 70 gallons an hour of each solution. As I mentioned, very sophisticated remote monitoring. Actually has sensors on, on, on the two solutions coming out so you know exactly uh, what they are. There's recordings of those. And this is a system that's in a hotel in San Francisco. And if you look at it, you see five white tanks. Well, this system now, um, Pathosans has reduced that to just three tanks. So on the top shelf would be one tank, and that's where the salt water and electricity come together, and then it would flow into the two uh, storage tanks. And if you look down the bottom of that shelf on the right, you'll see some uh, bags of salt, and, and, and that's all you need is some, um, not rock salt, but uh, some salt that the company suggests. That's what a system would look like for, for a hotel, probably up to 300 rooms. And this is a system in a hotel in, in Vegas, uh, the Wynn Hotel, with 4,750 rooms. And um, they fill, Jim, they fill between 600 and 800 rooms a day of solution. And that's not a job that I want. So they uh, came up with a system to take the bottles and fill 16 bottles at a time. And that makes it a lot easier. It cuts that job down by probably 16 to 1 ratio. And um, so those are very large tanks. I believe it's a 125-gallon tank for the sodium hydroxide and then maybe a 100-gallon tank for the hypochlorous. And it's pumped into the bottle fillers, and then it goes out to the people that do the actual cleaning. But that's a 4,750 room. And if they're talking six to 800 bottles a day, that means they have between 300 and 400 people a day cleaning those rooms. That's that's a city in itself to me. That's some serious volume. I'm curious, how long have, has the Wynn Hotel been uh, using this uh, method? I believe I th I believe it's a year now. And and what I really appreciate about what the Wynn did is they really made their 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 employees part of it, and they employees why they were doing it, you know, for their health. And, and the employee, employees love it. I mean, they really do. I've, I've installed systems where, you know, I don't think I've installed one where the employees have not. They notice a difference. They notice a difference on their skin. You know, if, if, if you have a scratch or something, uh, the hypochlorous actually um, uh, speeds the healing of the wound. Um, we have a cat and loves to sit in my wife's lap, and she constantly has to spray herself with hypochlorous because, uh, you know, the cat uh, scratches on a pretty regular basis. So the, a lot of different areas uh, that, that um, hypochlorous can be used. Um, Las Vegas uses it uh, for treating of its drinking water, and, and we're working with some um, African countries and um, South American countries and, and for that ma uh, matter, Mexico. Um, we, can, we can clean, we can kill the bacteria in their drinking water. Um, that's one of the major problems that these countries have and these continents have is drinking water, and we can purify their drinking water. And it's not a complicated process. It's using electrolyzed water. Uh, Canon uses it to uh, cut down on soil pollutants. Sanyo, uh, they actually put it into dishwashing machines. Um, there's some dishwashing machines that you can buy, not so much here in the United States, uh, because we're, we're kind of dominated by some co uh, large companies here, but in other parts of the world, where electrolyzed water goes into the dishwashing machines. And it can also be used in um, uh, clothes washing machines, and Sanyo is there also. Uh, water treatment centers, uh, uh, restaurants, uh, Denny's is mentioned as far as in Japan, and there's two major, major chains here in the United States right now that are testing electrolyzed water with one of the, uh, with one of the companies that, that I'm aware of. And I did put down there for uh, wound care, open heart surgery, 
a uh, number of different areas that uh, electrolyzed water can be used can be used for. So what have we learned today? Um, I'm hoping we've learned that the you know the cost of toxic chemicals to to people in the environment is substantial. And I don't think people have really had a handle on that during the past four or five years. They've concentrated on other other areas, but this one again is the game changer as far as sustainability. The positive impact on, on the carbon footprint. Just think all those things that we can help make go away. Um, we've learned how we can eliminate toxic chemicals in the workplace. And I talk about that, that's electrolyzed water systems. Can you install them on site? You produce your solutions when you need them, and then you go from there and you throw all those other things out the window. Uh, the financial rewards, again, what, what can you buy that pays for itself in a year? Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of too many things nowadays that I can do that. And so we've learned what it can do for our businesses. Uh, it, it can reduce costs. It can make our employees safer, healthier, um, probably have a better attitude because they know they're not drinking in or breathing in these solutions. So a lot, a lot of positive things that, that we've learned can happen with electrolyzed water. So that's uh, cleaning and sanitizing technologies. I can actually increase that to say clean, sanitizing, and disinfecting technologies. And my company is gogreenelectrolyzer.com, and we do consulting and, and marketing of some different systems that are out there and working with our clients to bring the best customer to the best client to the best manufacturer and presenting it to the world. And I also do a, a fair amount of consulting for, for companies that are looking at different ways of doing some, some things, some very, very large companies that have great programs. I'm talking, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 billion dollar companies that have great programs in the other arenas of sustainability, but now are looking at chemicals. We need to do something about these chemicals. Well, Larry, I really, really, really appreciate you sharing your wisdom here and your insights. And obviously, you've got a passion for this. And I hope that your passion translates for everybody who's watching or listening to this webinar. Because as we start to raise the awareness of other options that are out there, things that are more sustainable, that can be financially better off for people and return our planet to a state where it's, uh, it's healthier, um, that is exactly what we want to do here. So, Larry, I really, really, really appreciate you uh, sharing today. And um, in closing, for everyone who's listening, as we mentioned before, the U.S. Green Chamber of Commerce is actively looking for people who want to be advocates of the triple bottom line. So uh, we have membership options. We have sponsorships. We are currently looking for uh, advisors. And there's committees that you can serve.